Guys, if I burp in this video, I apologize, but I've just taken 25 vitamins. I normally take about 25 per day. And I'll have a video up very soon on those vitamins that I take. I'll go through all of them individually, one by one, and explain to you why I take each one of them. Anyhow, if I burp, I apologize, because yeah, I'm feeling a bit of um, indigestion. So I got an email uh, today, actually, from, I won't say who it's from, but anyway, let's call him, let's call him Bob. So Bob sent me an email, he says, Hi, Sam, I own an EV and a heat pump. I minimize my carbon footprint and am an advocate of green technologies. I've watched pretty much all of your videos over the last 12 months. I doubt that, but thank you. And usually post a supportive comment. Thanks, Bob. Very kind of you. I'm pretty immune to the anti-EVers uh, who ridicule EVs, but recently had replies to a post which really annoyed me. I'm assuming he posted, ah, here we go. In response to your recent video on Saudi solar, I suggested that at some stage, Saudi Arabia might use any excess solar to become an exporter of green hydrogen for air transport and power generation. So basically, Bob's saying that Saudi Arabia isn't just building out massive amounts of renewables. By the way, if you didn't know this, uh, the Middle East is installing renewables at a rate that's nearly at a, on pace with China. So they are second place in the world. They're, they've actually overtaken Australia and the United States. Saudi Arabia is all in on renewables. He went on to say, this isn't something I've dreamt up. It's been suggested elsewhere too, by specialists in aviation and power generation. But the comments I got were from people who clearly hadn't read the post, telling me quite aggressively and insultingly that I was an idiot for, for, for suggesting that hydrogen use was viable, asked if I understood that hydrogen was dead for cars, that EVs were way better. And was I aware of the Toyota Mirai failure, etc.? The answer to those are yes, I do. Now, I don't mind arguing my case, but here I found myself being accused of having the opposite view to that which I hold. Are these people just idiots or is this a new form of attack on, on EV advocates? Pretend to misunderstand. In any event, I'm refraining from comments from a while. Keep up the good work. Best wishes, Bob. His name isn't Bob, but anyhow. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. My point in sharing this with you is to say, if you're going to make comments on YouTube, that's great. I'm all for it. You're going to make comments on social media, on Facebook. But what I suggest is reading the full comment before you respond. And that's not everyone, but some people are clearly not reading the full comment. Seeing things like, oh, someone's mentioned hydrogen, therefore they must be talking about hydrogen cars. Now, first of all, uh, Bob is correct. Bob is 100% correct. And Bob is not suggesting that hydrogen cars will ever take off because I don't think they ever will. That game is finished. Of course, of course, Toyota doesn't think so. Toyota says no hydrogen cars will dominate the market by 2040. And they believe around 80% of the market by 2040 will be hydrogen cars, which I think is insane. What do you guys think about that? Getting back to Bob's comment, Bob is saying that shipping and aviation could, could move to hydrogen. Bob's right. In fact, Bob is absolutely 100% correct. Now, aviation could be a combination of electric, battery-powered planes, and hydrogen-powered planes. Shipping is most likely to be hydrogen-powered, I believe, because the size of battery you would need for a ship would be huge. And here's the thing. Hydrogen prices right now are expensive. But to fuel your, your vehicle with hydrogen in the United States, for example, in California, it's around $37 a kilogram. It used to be around $12 a kilogram. In other words, the price has more than tripled. Very expensive. But that won't always be the case. In fact, hydrogen will become quite cheap because there'll be so much of it. When I say so much of it, there'll be so much hydrogen being made that there won't be enough demand for all the hydrogen that will exist and that will bring down the price of hydrogen. So why is there going to be so much hydrogen? Well, the reason is this. For us to have a 100% renewable economy, 100% renewable grid, which we all will, um, pretty much all the world is going to move away from fossil fuels, not because of uh, emotional reasons or the Paris Climate Agreement or anything like that, uh, climate change. Now, those are the reasons why they should, but that won't be why they'll do it. It's simply because of economics. It's simply because solar... And batteries is cheaper. Sometimes wind is a good option as well, depending on where you live. But for a lot of places, they won't need wind. 90% of the world lives on the sunbelt. Now, places like Texas, wind is 
perfect. There are certain locations around the world where there is so much wind, uh, there are trees that don't grow, the trees don't grow straight, right? And in those locations, yeah, wind's going to be brilliant. But other places, you won't need wind. Anyhow, for a purely renewable grid, you need to generally build out, Tony Sieber says, 200% capacity. That means most of the time, you've got to be making 100% more electricity than you actually need, most of the time. Now, why do you need 200% or superpower? Well, because some of the time, very rarely, maybe 1% to 2% of the time, you're actually going to need it. You might find situations where, I don't know, a really weird thing happens, you haven't seen it, there's been no sun for a week, there's been no wind for a week, and you need that extra capacity. But that means that probably 98 to 99% of the time, you're going to have an excess capacity of energy of at least 100, or probably about 100% more than you need. So what are we going to do with all this electricity? Well, governments around the world have already decided. I mean, many governments, I, I, I don't know where to start, where to finish, because we've heard this from at least 20 different governments, state governments, federal governments all around the world, saying they're going to become massive net hydrogen exporters. Uh, Melbourne here in Australia, Victorian government, they've said it. Uh, the South Australian government have said it. Uh, the West Australian government here in Australia have said it. So basically half of Australia has already decided that they are going to do this. Numerous other countries have said the same thing. They're going to be hydrogen exporters. I don't know who's going to buy all the hydrogen. I think there's going to be too much. But that's why the price of hydrogen will come down so much. And that's also why hydrogen ships will be totally economic, total economic logical certainty. And what that means is, yeah, it'll be great. The cost of shipping will go down. Uh, we won't get, guys, I'm out in the surf sometimes with my boys. Ships come in the harbor here and my God, wow. I mean, the pollution from these things is shocking. It feels like you're dying. It honestly feels like your lungs are burning. The pollution from, they have no filters on them whatsoever and they stink to high hell. If the wind is in the, if you've got an onshore wind or you've got a cross shore wind and it blows all that, those fumes into you, it is terrible. I mean, really bad. So that's going to be another big advantage of having, you know, ships moving to hydrogen, being powered by hydrogen. It'll be cheaper, it'll be more efficient and you won't have to breathe in all those pretty shocking fumes. But... What else will be powered by hydrogen? Of course, some aer airplanes will be. It's very possible that air flight could be hydrogen powered. I'm not sure what percentage. I mean, we could see, you know, large commercial type passenger airlines being hydrogen powered and then smaller aircraft being electric. But the other thing is we're going to have solid state batteries. Solid state batteries might be even safer for airplanes than hydrogen. In fact, they would definitely be safer for airplanes than hydrogen. So that, that may happen as well. But there will be well, there'll be a huge amount of hydrogen being produced. And the question is, what are we going to do with it all? It'll start with shipping, but it won't end there. It's going to go across to numerous industries. So why, why then will EVs not become hydrogen powered or you know, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles that have a battery, which is what the Toyota Mirai is? Well, because there doesn't really make sense. I mean, you can charge your EV at home and 99% of people who have a house wouldn't want to have to go and pay for hydrogen. It's just stupid. Why would you do that? Think about it. A massive percentage of people in Australia and in America and in Europe have solar panels on their roofs. Or they can charge their EVs during the day very, very cheaply. Electricity is extremely cheap during the day when there's huge amounts of sun uh, or huge amounts of renewable energy being created. During the day, it's very cheap. And it's cheaper than what hydrogen will ever be. So why would you want to move away from that to be dependent on fossil fuel companies who could do what they're doing right now to people in California, right? If you want to drive your hydrogen powered car in California right now, you pretty much got to be a multi, multi millionaire to be able to afford the cost of hydrogen. It's ridiculous, right? You don't want to be um, basically under the control of fossil fuel companies, which is what even hydrogen producers will become or countries or whatever. That's still a form of a fossil fuel. Why would you do that if you don't need to, right? EV range will continue to grow. EV prices will continue to come down. But with a, with a ship, a ship still needs a massive battery, right? And that's where it probably wouldn't make economic sense. So I think the, the game is over for cars. I think that's pretty, pretty, pretty damn certain. I, I believe Toyota is 100% wrong on their claims. Even BMW, you know, making the new uh, hydrogen-powered X5. I think that's just a massive waste of money. However, shipping and aviation are two areas where hydrogen will definitely take over. I mean, I, I think probably by 2050, 2060, every ship is going to be powered by hydrogen. That is the most likely outcome. 
And when I say ship, I'm talking large ships, you know, small boats. Small boats could be electric, bigger boats might be hydrogen powered, could be a combination of both. Guys, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Bye-bye.